Hey everyone, I'm Alfred, and welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Uh, I don't even know if I have enough adventures to finish this game, but no, we might. Holy shit. Skeleton lock. Digital lock. Star lock. Doorknob. Sneaky Pete's lock. Yalsberg lock. Boris lock. Place Boris's key in the lock and turn it. You hear Jolly bellowing the distance as the lock vanishes along with the metal plate it was attached to. Huh. Oh, oh, I know what these are. The keys. So normally these would allow me access to these things. But they require meat. So I didn't really care too, too much. But now I can just plug them in here. Put Yarlsberg's key in the lock and turn it. Hear Nasal sort of annoying laugh in the distance as the lock vanishes in a puff of rotten egg smelling smoke. Put the key in the lock and hear the roar of a motorcycle behind you. By the time you turn around and check out the cool motorcycle guy, he's gone. But when you look at the lock, it's also gone. Hey, boss. For this, you're going to need a skeleton key. Get it? Well, no. If you'd had, you'd, you'd use it. Make one out of bits from skeletons from the cemetery. Not the do-it-yourself type, and let's face it, from the looks of it, you're not. You can buy a key at the mall. A dime a dozen these days. Okay, you're going to need a key made of stars. No, it sounded like hippie crap to me, but you need to find your way to the hole in the sky. No, it sounds scary, but it's actually hilarious. Also, I think I have some of those. Uh, Richard Star key. Seven star, eight stars and seven lines. How many of those do I have? I have two. I have no dots. Well, I don't know if I ever actually went to the hole in the sky. You're finding the burrowing bishop. Ancient astronomers claimed the famous bishop of loathing was known for spinning his meter like a drill and using it to search for sacred relics underground. Unsurprisingly, they never said what his name supposedly was. Spins his meter and charges at you, but he'd leap out of the way like a nervous altar boy. Ugh. We got two lines. Right on the astronomer. According to the astronomers of times old, this constellation most closely remembered an astronomer. This is because the astronomers of the times old occasionally like to switch from childish double entendre to inexplicable self-reference. We got a star chart. A device used to, by astronomers to try a random cluster of stars actually looks like something. Let's take a look. Oh, you have the chart filled with shipping patterns, celestial formulae, and glowing blueprints. What do you make out of your two stars and four lines? Nah, that's nothing. All right, back to the lab again. This is the junk, a constellation which resembles a junk. A junk is a boat with multiple sails and a raised poop deck. <laughs> he said a poop deck. Bonk. Fighting the trouser snake. This is the trouser snake. So it was a snow name, so named because it resembles a snake wearing pants. Pants with one leg, so it resembles a snake. We got two lines. Fight the family jewels. Constellation resembles an enormous pair of cut gemstones. Bonk them. Fighting the skin flute. Constellation depicts a flute made of some sort of animal hide. That's creepy on lots of different levels. Another line. Twig and berries. Constellation is in the shape of a twig and two berries. With astronomy, even the most innocuous of objects can be made to seem rude. Another line. Astronomer. Tries to capsize you, but B5, you sunk my battleship. Another line. Okay, can I... Star chart. God, I don't have enough stars. It's just random. Okay. Yeah, it is just random. That's wild. Maybe I can buy some on the black market. Actually, no, the black market is a thing. Miscellaneous. Hmm. Well. Not exactly what I was hoping for. Oh, the pork sword. Constellation resembles one of the legendary sword formed by the pork elves in times of old. Oh, we got two stars. Nice. Uh, 
Uh, we still need two more. We need three more stars. The Hooded Warrior. Constellation looks like a guy wearing dots, made of dots and lines, wearing a hood and holding a sword. Just a guy made of dots and lines, wearing a hood, holding a sword. The Astronomer. Now the Star Chart. You know, I can actually do this off screen, and I will. I'll be right back. Hey, I checked them all, so um, I'm too poor to afford any more uh, pixels, but I got a few. So let's take a look here. Kachunk. Flash of Billion Starlight, accompanied by a competent but not exceptional drum solo, and when both have faded, the lock is gone. The skeleton key was very easily uh, obtained. I have quite a few. I have had quite a few. And we need a digital key for this lock. So let's go to the Crackpot Mystic. Where is this? First village. The Untinkerer's Cottage. I... All right, here we go. Hello, young adventurer. You seem like an intelligent story. I'd like to hear a tale of a mystical realm which lies outside the tales of confines of time and space. Sure. Let me start my tale of the beginning, which is when tales should start. Don't you think? We see reality here in the kingdom is what a fraction of it exists. Long before the times of old was all void. And the void was stumbled upon by an ancient race of transdimensional beings. I know what they call themselves, but I call them the designers. They created all we see through the master of a strange technology I refer to as the pixel. Do you believe me, young adventurer? Sure. I knew you would. I shall continue. I stumbled upon an artifact of great mystery and power. Power is only exceeded by its mystery. And by manipulating it, I was able to move outside of the kingdom into a sort of border realm between our world and the world of the designers. A strange and dangerous place filled with an assortment of strange and dangerous creatures. For years, I fought and defeated these creatures and became skilled to a certain extent in manipulation of the pixel. I've grown old. These brittle bones can no longer extend the rigors of, com of combat. My supply of pixels has dwindled to nothing. We pick up the torch, adventurer? Journey this realm so I can continue my st studies? Wonderful. Equip this and you can enter the 8-bit realm. I've forgotten where the door, where the door lies. <gasps> oh gosh, excuse me. All right, let's take a look. This is the correct part mystery mystic told you, an artifact of great power and mystery. Its power is exceeded by its mystery, and strangely, its mystery is exceeded only by its power. What the hell ever. Um, I guess let's take this off for a time. Mostly because it'll help me... Uh, easier to notice. Oh, that reminds me. I can fight some fucking seals, right? Bonk. Oh, that one, huh? Well, that's unfortunate. Got a lot of regular seal blub candles, though. And 17 white pixels. That's pretty good. Still got all these hell seal whiskers. Yeah, let's just kill a bunch of seals. It's what I do. It's what I do. All right. Uh, crackpot mystic. Oh, inexplicable door. Well. Oh. So look at that. Now that's service. I'll tell you what. That's uh, that's nice and easy. You're fighting a bullet bill. A big bull with arms for punching people after shooting them. Or maybe before, since that seems to make a little more sense. Bonk him. Got a bunch of black pixels. Fighting a keese. A keese, or maybe a coose. You're never sure if this is the plural or not. It's essentially a bat. Or a bot. Got blue pixels. Tectite, something like a four-legged spider, which makes it not like a spider. It's something like a dog, so maybe it's a spider that had four legs pulled off. No wonder it is so angry. Spits webbing at you, but you spit juice back at it. Damn. Another black pixel. Goomba, sort of mushroom-looking thing with legs. Doesn't look dangerous, but looks to be deceiving. Since it also looks deceiving, you're not sure how you should interpret that. Red pixel and black pixel. Octorock, a land-based octopus which shoots rocks out of its snout. A feature which makes it somewhat less like an octopus. Uh, be careful, I guess. Boulet Bill. Koopa Troopa. It's a turtle, but not like the turtle from the kingdom. It's more 8-bit. Green Pixel. 
Bloopa, big white squid, lazily floats around making bloop bloop noises while extending and contracting its tentacles. No big threat. Three white pixels. All right. We're getting closer to the end. You're fighting a Zol. This is like a gel only bigger with eyes. If you don't know what a gel is, this description is meaningless. Unfortunately, it's the only description you're getting. I actually really like the original uh, Zelda. Maybe you should do like a huge fucking Zelda retrospective where I play every single Zelda game, one after another, after another, after another. White pixel. I mean, I've already started on like playing every Halo game and I'm already like quite a deal in. Digital key, 30 white pixels. I have 24 white pixels, damn. Well, hit some more. Oop. Damn, only one. Really, huh? Green pixel. Come on, please. Oh, white pixel. And another white pixel. All right. Let's check again how much I have. I have 27. I need three more. Come on. Maybe. Can I sell my own? Oops. Not you. Hmm. I've never actually done anything like this before. Buy a store for, f wow, Jesus. I actually could have done that a while ago. Short hair girl, that's cute. Frat boy, nice. Guy with trophy. Two men with no arms or legs. Suspicious looking guy. Admiral. Man with Canada hat. Let's go back to the 8-bit realm. Come on, I just need three white pixels. Green pixels, great. <gasps> Please, two white pixels. Okay, I literally just need one more. Red pixels. Blue. Red. White pixel. With my two adventurers that save the day. Digital key, 30 white pixels. Check a Rooney. Digital key. And I can actually make all of these as well. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I could have been making... I'm so stupid, everyone. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. That was really dumb of me. can't believe how stupid that was. Read, you moron. <laughs> All right, you put the digital key in the lock and turn it. A familiar sequence of eight tone plays as the lock disappears. Do -do 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 -do. Door knob. Turn the knob and the door vanishes. I guess it was made out of the same weird material as those lock plates. All right. If I drink one of these, it should be fine, right? One drunkenness and four adventurers. All right, so I've got six. Okay. You bastard. Okay. Oh, a beehive. Do I have one of those? Am I cheating? Yes. Tough titties. Beehive, there it is. All right, you're finding a wall of skin. Your way forward is blocked by a wall of nasty, stitched together looking human skin. You know, if you'd asked me a minute ago if you'd be happy with skin, I said yes. I'm not sure now. It lifts up an especially nasty flap of itself, revealing an unbelievable stench. Ew, I don't like that at all. 
hurled the beehive to the ground in front of the wall skin. It ruptures, sending hundreds of angry bees flying in every direction. Oop, fuck, I just punched my microphone. Shit. Excuse me. The ones that don't immediately sting the wall bounce off the walls and sting it a second later. Ugh, the wall fattens with welts, swelling larger and larger until it explodes in a shower of fat, blood, and histamines. Ugh. That, laughs Frank, was something else. Tower level two. Final wall of meat. Takes damage normally, and it scales your max HP, so they don't ramp up. Feed it quickly until all of its meat is removed. Having a meat bonus helps tear it down quicker. Oh, I can do that. You know, this says item grinding, but I think it's actually meat grinding. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it is. Finding a wall of meat. Way forward is blocked by a room-spanning wall of meat. Raw, pulsing, vein-shot meat. Ugh, I knew this thing was coming, says Frank, but I was not prepared. Blah. You know, beer tastes better in a frosty mug. Well, you mug your opponent with your frosty sledgehammer of the Velcro, which is sort of similar except for being refreshing. You deals a lot of damage. Some of the meat meets your needs. Not a happy meeting. Bonk. The wall shifts and sprays a guy of blood on you. Frank explains that it's not actually blood, but water shattered with myoglobin. That doesn't make it any less disgusting. That's what the weird goop on um, uh, meat is when you get it from the grocery store. The slab of meat dislodges itself from the wall and falls on you like a ton of brisket. You serve your opponent a beating like the best dish of revenge. Wait, you get revenge on your opponent and serve it best cold. <laughs> you serve your opponent some revenge according to the traditional recipe and deal 201 damage. Wait, is it better if I just do... Ugh. Okay, so it's not. Made a dent that cheap, but I bet you could get more meat out of it if you were really trying. Wall of meat. Huh. Oh, so I just gotta go in again, huh? That's unfortunate. The wall lashes out a sausage-like pseudopod and slaps you on the arm. Ew! Whoa, shouts Frank. That had a hoit. That's really gross. Some of the meat meets your groin. It's not a happy meeting. Oh, that's so icky. A heavy tongue of meat disgorges itself from the wall and slaps your foot. Oh, it's actually getting broken. That's cool. This is actually kind of making me sick to my stomach. Stomach. All right, I guess we'll go back in again. Smaller than the last time, Chief. Keep it up. Hell yeah. Northern Explosion. You strike a chilling blow, dealing 214 damage, make a lonely whoosh sound. The fact that it's a tongue on me is so gross. Isn't there a... Um... Isn't there one of these? Yeah, this thing's so icky. You know, Adventure Time had far too much nightmare fuel for its own good. Ugh. Why was Adventure Time allowed to be that gross? Wait, what? Yeah, it's, I just, sorry. Getting off topic. Oh my god, I've actually burned all my stuff. Okay. Don't think there's any trick to getting to winning this one. Oh fuck. That's not what I wanted. That's really bad in fact. Oh god. And I'm out of muscularity points. Alright. Let's lick myself. All right, let's go bang my head against this asshole again. That's so unfortunate. You know, that's actually a little better. So what, it's like a thousand, another dent. Damn, damn, damn. All right, can I drink? 
is it when I'm at my limit or above my limit? I don't remember. All right. Definitely smaller than last time. Damn straight it is. Uh, will you please stop hitting me? Looks like the last of the meat. You look up and he's right. Stairs next to the stairs to the next floor are clean. Cool. All right, wall of bones. An electric boning knife will destroy it. Why don't we just see if I can get my hands on an electric boning knife? Actually, wait. Boning knife. How about electric? Damn, really? Hmm. Gross. I mean, maybe I already have one. Why don't I check that? Damn, how well. Maybe we can just kill him old style. I don't really want to fight. Hmm. Although I don't know if I really have a chance. Uh, what is what is a group damage skill? Hmm. I don't have any of these. All right. Well. I suppose that's really the game, isn't it? I'll see you guys next episode for when I continue this quest. Though it may be a little bit, a little bit more. So, you know. Yes, I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. And I'm real sorry that I'm real dumb and didn't read that I can just turn stuff into white pixels. Let's drink a big one. Having trouble naming something set on fire. Rules never served me wrong, with the single exception of getting me thrown out of that maternity ward. It's a good booze. Five adventures. But I'm falling down drunk. Here's to guy you say as you drink the flaming what's his name? Should have waited for it to burn out first. Nah. Way too drunk. Okay. So I'll see you all back next. Um, as we mentioned, we've been playing a lot more Kingdom of Loathing than normal because I really want to get through it all. So, yeah, I'll see you guys back. What is today? Thursday? Saturday? Yeah, I guess I'll see you guys then. So, yeah, I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. Thanks for coming by.